and welcome to the GE MDS video training series. In this video, I will show you how to modify firewall filters. As a general disclaimer, unless you really know what you're doing with regards to the firewall configuration, you should not be changing the firewall filters. Contact our technical services department for assistance. The phone number is at the end of this video. However, for this video, I'll cover the basics. We'll go through the web configuration as well as the console, and then I'll show you how to use the wizard configurator. Before we get to the configuration, I want to briefly talk about why you would want to change the default firewall filters. A firewall filter is just a group of firewall rules. These rules determine what IP packets are allowed in and out of the orbit. By default, all interfaces, besides the cell interface, are bridged. This means that they use the bridge IP address and firewall filter settings. Since the bridge is typically not connected to a public network, the firewall rules associated with the bridge allow all traffic to flow in and out. In contrast, the cell is a public interface and the filters are restrictive and drop most of the traffic by only allowing certain data to pass. Modifying of the firewall filters comes into play when these default rules do not work for your application. Example needs for firewall modification are Adding drop rules to remove unwanted traffic coming over your bridge interface, such as multicast or broadcast traffic that can saturate your over-the-air links. Or, adding allow rules to open up TCP and UDP ports on your cellular interface for incoming data connections for polling or device management. These can include Modbus and DNP3 ports for data, or HTTPS and SSH ports for management. For additional firewall theory and information, view the dedicated firewall basics video in this series. Now let's talk about an application. For this video, let's say I want to Modbus pull over the cellular network to a serial RTU device off of the orbit we're using. Also, I want to allow HTTPS connections over the cellular link for device management. Finally, I want to block all the multicast traffic coming into my bridge interface to reduce the network load. To configure this using the web interface, navigate to the unit's web GUI and log in as the admin user. The first thing you should determine is what firewall filters the bridge and cell interface are using. Navigate to the interfaces, then bridge, basic config, then filter. Take note of the filters the bridge is using. Repeat this for the cell interface. Click Cell, then Basic Config, Filter, and jot those filters down as well. These are the filters we must modify to fit our application needs. To modify those firewall filters, on the left click Services, then Firewall. Firewall configuration is done in the Basic Config tab. Click on Filter, Access Control List, and the section will expand to show the filter list. Let's modify the cell interface first. For the application, we need to Modbus pull the RTU over the cellular network into the orbit. Therefore, this is an input filter. We determined that the cell interface uses in untrusted for the input filter. So let's click on that. Displayed is the list of rules this filter contains. All firewall filter rule lists are processed in numerical order. We can see rules 1 and 2 accept specific protocols, and then rule 10 drops all remaining protocols. We need to add a TCP protocol rule that opens up our Modbus port. The default Modbus port is 502. Click on Add, and I'll make this rule ID number 3. Select TCP for protocol with a destination port of 502. Scroll to Actions and select Accept from the dropdown. We also want HTTPS access to our cell IP address for device management. This also uses the in untrusted filter, so we can go ahead and add another rule here. Click Add and make this rule ID number 4. HTTPS uses TCP, and then select Destination Port, Services, 
and select HTTPS in the list and click Add. Check Actions and select Accept, then click Finish. Our first two rules are made, and now we must block multicast traffic coming into our bridge interface. Obviously, we don't want this rule if running any UDP multicast setup. This is another input filter, but for the bridge, it's going to be the in trusted filter. Click that filter and notice only rule 10 is present, which accepts all data. We need to add a drop rule that filters the multicast subnet. Click add and create rule ID number one. Keep protocol set to all and check off destination address. Click the choices box and select address. Then type in the multicast subnet into the field. I've determined it to be 224.0.0.0/4. Check off actions and select drop from the drop down. Click on finish, then click finish again and save the configuration when you're ready. To perform the same actions using the console, log in as admin and issue the command show services to see the status of the firewall. Verify that your unit has the firewall enabled. If yours is disabled, then follow the next step to turn it on. Type configure and press enter to switch the unit into configuration mode. The command set services firewall enabled true will turn the firewall on, but note that this will not take effect until we commit the configuration. We'll do that later. To determine which firewall filters your interfaces are configured for, type show interfaces interface filter. See that the bridge interface uses in trusted and out trusted, and the cell uses in untrusted and out untrusted. To see the firewall filters, type show services firewall filter, then the filter name. Looking at the in untrusted filter, Rules 1, 2, and 10 exist. Rule 1 accepts all ICMP traffic. Rule 2 accepts UDP DNS traffic. The last rule, Rule 10, drops all traffic. So the new rule must come before Rule 10. Type the following command to add it the firewall filter rule. At any time during this command, pressing the tab key will bring up a list of available options. The command will create Rule 3 into the in untrusted filter that matches the traffic destined for port 502. Now that the rule has been created, the action must be set. Use the following command to set the action for this rule. In this case, since we want traffic to be allowed into the cell interface, our rule will need to be set to accept. Type the following command to add the second firewall filter rule. This command will create rule 4 in the in untrusted filter that matches traffic destined for the HTTPS service. Then enter the command that sets this rule to accept all traffic. The last rule we will create is on the intrusted filter. Issue a show command on the intrusted filter. Displayed is only one rule, rule 10, which accepts all traffic. We need to create a rule before rule 10 that drops multicast traffic. The command issued matches all traffic destined for the multicast subnet. The final command will set this rule to drop all traffic in the multicast IP range. Let's review the configuration by issuing a show command on the in untrusted filter. See that rules 3 and 4 have been created. A show on the in trusted filter displays that rule 1 has been made. When satisfied, commit the configuration. Finally, the last method of configuration I will show is through the web interface's firewall wizard. Log into the device's admin and click wizards on the left hand side. Then click the firewall access control list link to open the wizard. Click next. Then select the filter you wish to modify by clicking on the box on the far left. Then click edit selected. Displayed now is the rule list for the selected firewall filter in Untrusted. Let's go ahead and add the rules for our application. Click on Add New Rule, and the new rule will be created at the bottom of the list. Use the up and down arrows to rearrange the rule list order, and then modify the rule to match on TCP, destination port 
502, Actions Accept. Then create the second rule to match on TCP, Services HTTPS, Actions Accept. We have one more rule to add, so click on Back and then check off the In Trusted Filter Only and click Edit Selected. Add a new rule that matches all protocols for destination address of the multicast subnet and actions drop. This should be the first rule in the list. Click Next. Verify your interfaces are using the correct filters, then click Next. Verify the summary page, then click Submit at the bottom. I hope this video was helpful for you. For additional information, visit our website at www.gemds.com.